were live. Okay, I was asked some uh, interesting questions. So why did God create the world? Why are we here? And what happened in the beginning? <laughs> okay. Um, these are just, uh, these, are, these are my personal, I have to say this, otherwise I'll get too, minute, too much flack. These are my personal views ah, yes. on this. So take what you want, leave the rest. Okay. Why did God create the world? Well, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start with a frame of, um, uh, which was, uh, I mean, why questions from the ego are endless? And they do, uh, they are a kind of an avoidance of doing spiritual work to recognize mm -hmm. what lies beyond mm. all the endless why questions, which are infinite mm. in nature and never ending. Um, the <clears throat> why did God create the world? Okay, so this is just how I see it. Why did, why did God create the world? Well, you know, mm. I, would look, I would frame these questions a bit like, you know, why are plants green? And, uh, you know, why, why is the sky blue? And why is a table, why are trees brown? You know, like, you know, and here's the thing about, uh, what I sort of see is more helpful is, is the word um, isness. Isness is like, in, and so also I'd like to talk about something when you start to get into spiritual work, uh, into, into advanced spiritual work, you'll hear the word duality and non-duality. Mm -hmm. So, um, what does that mean? Well, duality means, uh, as I, I would say, uh, an experiencing of a this and a that. You know, I'm here and you're there, this mm -hmm. and that. Or, I'm, I'm black and you're white, this and that. Or, uh, you know, I'm in this body, you're in that body, or there's a this and that, you know, yesterday was yesterday and tomorrow will be tomorrow. Mm. So there's a this and that. So they're, they're dualistic opposites. Up and down. Sorry? Up opposites. And down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, both of them are opposites. Yeah. So this creation of du duality, a this and a that, or opposites, or polarities. So for polar when polarity when polarity exists, when there suddenly is a separation or there's a me, then these endless why questions uh, start to arise in consciousness. Now, my own, my own view is that in the realm... So, what does non-duality mean? Well, non-duality, I would say, is when there is no longer experiencing of a this and a that. Mm. Then one is uh, in what's called the non-dual state. So the non-dual state is, you know, I would say classically it's called the enlightened state. Mm. So the, uh, the, the riddle of duality or separation, or metaphorically the fall from grace in the Garden of Eden into what I would call duality or separation, or being seemingly feeling like one is cast out of the heavenly the eternal heavenly state of light into a world of separation and this and that and yearning and good and evil. So all of that occurs as soon as... Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to use, for today I'm going to use the word identification with form. As soon as identification with form occurs, what, what is form? Form can be thoughts, form can be images, the body, Form can be all kinds of concepts, form can be time, um, form can be all, you know, the endless concepts that, 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 that can be picked up. So as soon as there's identification, then um, it's like a me exists that can question the world and is also, as soon as the me exists, perception exists and uh, different types of worlds are perceived based on what's being held in consciousness, you know, the thoughts being held in, or the ideas being held in, or the concepts being held in. So, I'm going to answer the question in a kind of a obscure way today. When I went, went to meet my teacher of enlightenment, Muji, he asked me, you know, what am I beyond my thoughts? You know, I said, oh, there's an observer observing the thoughts. And what's observing, and he asks me what's observing the observer. 
and I had a white light spiritual experience of just infinite light, love and power and there was no, that was it. There was no me, there was no world, there was no this, there was no that, there was no time, nothing, just infinite light, power and love. That's what I'd call a non-dual state, if you were to put words on it, or, the, or a state of infinite light and nothing else. Uh, infinite love, light and power. And then it was kind of obvious, describing it, that as soon as there was identification with thought, as soon as a thought was identified with, picked up, uh, merged with, suddenly like the whole world seemed to exist. There was a me, there seemed to be, now there was a me and there was a world being perceived. But I was in a state of absolute, you could say ecstasy or bliss, because there was hardly any thought being picked up, it was just bliss and oneness and ecstasy. But then it seemed like more thoughts started to be hooked into. And then suddenly it was like, there was like the usual me, the ego me. And now there was like, oh, I, I was having to go to work. I had work later on that day. You know, how, you know, what am I going to do at work? When I was at work, you know, there was fear. Am I going to meet my sales targets? So now there was a, a me existed, which was much more in a state of fear or uh, thinkingness. So, so it's like, if I don't identify with any type of form, thought, or the world in any way, then there's just infinite light and love for all eternity. So, so the question that was asked of me, I'm answering it in an obscure way, why did God create the world? Well, for me, I wouldn't, you know, again, this is creating an, an, a dualistic idea of a God, um, a God creating something. But I would say, like, out of the infinite, infinite light, you know, that's a, that's, a realm of, that's a realm. There is the realm right now, even for everyone listening right now, if they were to release all identification with thoughts, form, time, location and everything, that, that realm of infinite light is experienced right now. It's here right now. So the, the light and the truth is here. Or, also simultaneously, seemingly so, simultaneously, even though the light, the realm of light is here, as one identifies with form or thoughts or the, or the world, then, sorry, uh, the world, then it's like one goes into different seeming reality, different worlds seem to exist, from the worlds of infinite bliss and everyone's beautiful and there's just an unfolding timeless beauty to the world, to as you identify more with form, there seems to be a world of, oh, there's a me, thinking a little bit about the future and what I have to do and how I have to pay the rent. And if there's too much identification, there's illness, there's addiction, there's suicidal thoughts, there's all kinds of fears that start to manifest. And all of these are all simultaneously, seemingly existent now. Mm. Um, so it's like, really the truth is the infinite light in my, you know, but the seeming worlds of uh, what I call duality, seeming worlds of separation, or if you were to use, I guess, biblical terms, seeming worlds of hells, uh, hellish places of I'm in hell and this world is hell and everything is going badly for the separate me, can all sort of exist depending on the level of identification. In this world of why did, why did God create the world? Well, for me, it's not, you know, if you let go of the ego's labelling of the world, like why and me and this and why, mm. the level of consciousness is just what is. Wherever you are, with however much identification, it's the isness. I mean, if you're in the world of duality and, and the plant is green, if you don't make a label or a story about it, that's just is mm. green. You know, why is it green? That's, at the, in this vibration, it's green. No labelling of thought or thing it needs to be t imposed upon it. You know, it's a table. You know, why, why is it a table? I mean, it just you leave the why out of it. There is an experiencing of perception of a table, a green plant, uh, a white light, a lamp, a cup, a mug on a table. Everything is just 
if you let go of the ego labeling, is you could say it's the unfolding of creation is what it is. No why is required about it. We see everything. Now the thing with the ego, one of the great things with the ego is the ego likes to have a reason why things are, and has to. Ha you know, it's the idea of causality. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, one of the great things with the ego is it, it, it likes to believe in the universe as being Newtonian. Like everything happens in the world because of something else that's happened in the world. So it's like um, the reason the um, reason uh, the reason the reason um, this happens is because that happened to me yesterday, or whatever it is. But actually, as you go to higher levels of consciousness and awareness, you realize everything comes out of the infinite now. It's created out of the light. Mm -hmm. You see, this idea, actually the Course in Miracles talks about it. It's the idea of magic, as the Course in Miracles. Or this idea of causality. Things are happening because of something that just happened. But actually, you, as you get to higher levels of consciousness, you realize that because the ego believes it, it seems to have its own reality. So if I believe antibiotics will work for me, it seems like in the dualistic perceptual world they do. But later on you realize everything is emerging out of the realm of light. Mm. And if that belief doesn't exist, it doesn't exist for you, quite simply. These are just collective belief systems. You know, there's the, the belief system in science, which is just a belief system. But if you, if a number of people believe in it, it seems to be real. But actually, if you don't, if, if someone does spiritual work and releases their belief in it, then it seems that actually you're not, you're no longer subject to that. There's actually everything is spontaneously emerging out of the realm of light. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but anyway. Um, so why, why are we here? Why are we? Well, I'm, I've answered that question, the why questions, and the isness and the unfolding of the universe out of the light. So that, I think, answers the why question. What happened in the beginning? Well, here's the thing, you know, the thing of time and beginning. Well, again, time is just an artifact of identification with the concept of time. So here's the thing with time. And it's a great, this is a, a great trick to know if you've got a really long journey. Um, and you see, everyone's heard the expression of like, time flies and time's dragging. Everyone uses that in the thing. And here's the thing with, um, with time. Obviously, you know, you'll notice, like, you know, like, if you were to see a baby and they haven't got the concept of time, they're in the timeless now. They're in just this timeless exquisite. There's not even the, the idea or the concept of time, or even I would say that humans have this kind of thing, like this thing in the background, counting seconds. That hasn't yet emerged, so there's just the timeless now. So, when, um, if you go, so actually, and when you enjoy yourself, you're not counting seconds, and it's like t the whole day's gone in a split second. There was no time involved because of the immediacy. So, one of the things to unhook the idea of time is like, if I'm in time, I just ask, what's observing my interest in time? And then what's, and then is there a detached observing of time? And then what's observing the detached observer of time? And then actually time collapses. Because if you don't hook into seconds and minutes, or even the interest in time, time doesn't exist. But this whole world, so how does the whole world of perception, well really that's a better question for me, how does the whole world of perception exist through identification? What, what creates identification, well, I think that's not relevant. But um, as identification in time exists, then time exists for that, for the identity. As identification with the body exists, then it seems like the body is real. As identification with the collective exists, it seems like the collective humanity is real. As these are released in consciousness, you know, metaphorically, if we're going to use the metaphor of the garden, you know, the garden, is, the garden of Eden is the biting of the apple of identification with duality. You know, and as soon as duality exists, there's a me, there's a body, there's time, there's me, there's you, there's shame, there's fear. As soon as you release all identification with the, the realm of form, 
and the realm of the passing, you're back into the heavenly, infinite, timeless light uh, of, of um, I would say, so there's God manifest and there's God unmanifest. Out of God unmanifest, God manifest unfolds. So there's the infinite light, which is before the experiencing of this and that and duality and creation and time. And then you can be in the realm of time and creation and different realms of identification. So I didn't answer the question directly, but indirectly I've just given my view on it. 